Today we got to talk about Jackson Dart, Caleb Williams, and Portal Combat. What's up, Ken folks? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload about college football. And if you like college football, be here on the number one ranked show where we do a show every week. Usually coming out on Wednesday mornings talking about what's going on in college football in the offseason. And yeah, there's a lot going on in the offseason, right? Like, I want to do this segment because, frankly, I don't know that we're always going to have room to talk about some of these things as they pop up because so much of what I do is talk about the sport of college football and less about your team in particular. But players in particular are something we're all interested in, particularly as two of the three top players in all of the college football portal quarterbacks and specifically with ties to Oklahoma Ole Miss and USC. They are Caleb Williams, who entered the transfer portal not long after helping Oklahoma win the Alamo Bowl against Oregon, and Jackson Dart, who entered the transfer portal a week ago last Monday. And both of those guys are taking visits. One of them, Caleb Williams, was seen in Los Angeles. He was even posting IG video or IG photos to his story about being in Los Angeles for the last game of the regular season for the Los Angeles Rams and apparently took in a Lakers game. Not a bad visit, even if you don't go see USC's campus at all, as far as I'm concerned. Jackson Dart, last week, took a trip to Oklahoma, stayed a couple days with his buddy Michael Trigg, who also is a former, or I should say a USC tight end. They're not formers yet until they transfer. Both of those guys took visits. Uh, they also took visit to Ole Miss over the weekend. Now, let's get the landscape out of the way here. Ole Miss has Luke Altmyer at quarterback right now as the number one on its depth chart. Okay. Oklahoma has Dylan Gabriel as the number one on its depth chart right now, though Nick Evers might have something to say about that, say nothing to Micah Bowens. USC right now has Miller Moss, right? I expect to find out sooner rather than later where Jackson Dart and or Caleb Williams will land. But in doing my due diligence, I was really curious about Dylan Gabriel at Oklahoma, and I spent some time on the text messages talking to folks that had worked with Dylan Gabriel and what it was, what it meant for him to be at UCLA first, and then transferring or committing to transfer at Oklahoma. He's committed to transfer to two different places in the span of a month. Former Central Florida quarterback who was really great in 2020, I might add. He really wanted to play with Jeff Levy for Jeff Levy. He wanted to be in that offense where they're going to go a million miles an hour and try to score a bunch of points, and he's very familiar with it. And all the points raised that I thought I could bring to you were, hey, look, that's a good match. Both of those guys know each other. They understand each other. And it's really going to help you at a get up and running at a program that hasn't featured this sort of offense before, even though Oklahoma's used to scoring a bunch of points and wants to be more defensively sound. Hence, Brent Venables is the head coach to add to say nothing of adding Todd Bates, former defensive line coach at Clemson. I think that's wild and interesting uh, because wild in that Oklahoma's going to look a lot more like Baylor did, you know, circa the Art Bryles era and what Ole Miss looked like last year. Now, Lane Kiffin is still the head coach at Ole Miss. I think it's a slam dunk for Jackson Dart to end up at Ole Miss because he frankly – is a carbon copy of Matt Corral. You go look up their 247 sports profiles. They're nearly identical in their scores. As a matter of fact, I think Jackson Dart is one or six one thousandth of a point higher than Matt Corral. But other than that, both very, very highly recruited guys. And Dart comes with p tremendous pedigree. 2020 National Gatorade Player of the Year. And the second of three top line quarterback coming out of Corner Canyon, Zach Wilson. He of BYU and a top five pick in the NFL draft last year, along with Jackson Dart, who was actually really great during the second half of the year at USC. And then Devin Brown, who has committed to Ohio State, uh, or signed with Ohio State, I should say, who took over that spot, left vacant by Quinn Ewers, who transferred to Texas. Have more to say about Quinn Ewers, Texas, whatnot on the number one ranked show, uh, wherever it is you get your podcast, and of course right here on the number one ranked show YouTube channel. Another topic that I thought was interesting to discuss here, 
in as far as Dart and Williams is just what that might mean for the for college football. Like, I don't think it, I'm going too far out on a limb here to say we could see quarterbacks, a top line quarterback transfer three times over the course of his uh, career, and we've always kind of seen that. Like Nick Starkle, right? Arkansas, Mississippi State, San Jose State. He's even talking about A and M. Uh, We've seen it with Tate Martell, and that's kind of the line is the guys that start out as top quarterbacks don't usually end as top quarterbacks if they're transferring, and that falls in line. No matter what you think about a guy's attitude about transferring, usually you're not you're staying if you're the number one on the depth chart and you're that good. Like, that's just what it is. You don't usually go into the transfer portal unless you think you can do that much better, and that's what's shocking to Oklahoma fans about Caleb Williams is Entering the transfer portal, whether or not he comes out at Oklahoma or not, when I think that's increasingly unlikely, means that he thought he could do better than Brent Venables and Jeff Levy. And perhaps, you know, uh, this is going up on Martin Luther King Day, is a better fit with Lincoln Riley and just wanted to play with Lincoln Riley. And there's no reason not to think that that's true. That's the guy he committed to. That's the guy he played his first season of football for and with. To say nothing of Spencer Rattler, who also went into the transfer portal, and came out of South Carolina. I often wonder if Williams had gone into the portal before Rattler, would Rattler still be at Oklahoma? But that's the way these dominoes are falling. That's why the transfer portal and portal combat is so interesting. I'm also really excited to see how this ends because I call it portal combat, and we could end up with fire god Liu Kang if we're not you know, too careful about this. Centrion or no Centrion, uh, Chronica or no Chronica, Fire Liu Kang going to show up with these white tats on his shoulders talking about I'm being to regulate. So who is Fire Liu Kang this season? Last year, it looked like it was Alabama, right? Jameson Williams transfers from Ohio State, becomes the number one on the depth chart at Alabama, and proceeds to become what many people think is the number one wide receiver in the 2022 NFL Draft, which, by the way, is loaded with wide receivers. I'm putting together a list of 32 team or 32 players I think could be drafted in the first round. See how many of those players get drafted in the first round. And I was shocked at how many wide receivers I was coming across, not to mention what Jamison Williams is, but I think it's an interesting thought experiment to, to ask who developed Jamison Williams. Was it Holman Wiggins at Alabama? Was it Brian Hartline at Ohio State? They both, I think, share some of that responsibility. Brian Hartline identifying that dude out of St. Louis, Missouri, uh, and really helping that dude become who he is, but also Holman Wiggins giving that guy every advantage, I think, to try to, or every opportunity, I should say, not every advantage, to prove that he is one of the best wide receivers in the country. And I think when they signed him, I wasn't, I knew what what they were getting. They were getting a kick returner because Jaleel Billingsley was returning kicks for Alabama in 2020. He's a tight end, guys. That's absurd, but it also speaks to, hey, we thought we could get a little bit better than having a tight end return kicks for us, and Williams took a couple back to the house, right? In addition to being an absolute freak on the outside, I'm comparing him to Joey Galloway because he's got that kind of speed. People forget Joey Galloway ran 4.18. 4.18 coming out of Ohio State. That's ridiculous. So I'll interested, be interested to see how the NFL evaluates him after an ACL tear. And John Mechie, at least at the time of this recording, hasn't gone into the NFL draft yet. And I think that's interesting because he could return to Alabama after blowing out his ACL in the SEC championship game and leading Alabama in receptions, if not yards. Also today, Chuba Purdy announced he's transferring from Florida State to Nebraska. means there's going to be a quarterback derby at Nebraska. I still think Nebraska's on its way up. I'm very excited to see what Nebraska looks like in 2022. And Scott Frost is taking no chances, bringing in two quarterbacks that have the ability to start for him and, quite honestly, perhaps a, uh, a succession plan for 2023 in Chuba Purdy, Casey Thompson being your bridge quarterback, and that dude deserves to have a really great season. But he also is going to have offensive coordinator Mark Whipple, who was the offensive coordinator at Pitt, who turned Kenny Pickett into a Heisman finalist and perhaps a first-round draft pick in April along with Mickey Joseph, who was wide receiver coach at LSU before the season, bringing in with him Dakotas Crawford and Trey Palmer. But also Mickey Joseph is renowned for putting out that ridiculous wide receiving core in 2019 that included Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, and Terrace Marshall, right? We all know what those dudes are capable of. I'm excited to see which one of those guys ends the job. And then Oklahoma's got to travel to Lincoln to play Nebraska, so I'm all in on that game. 
The last thing I kind of want to touch on was uh, former Tulsa defensive back and CFL Grey Cup winner and CFL All-Star Dexter McCoyle is going to become the new safeties coach, or at least he's expected to become the new safeties coach at Incarnate Word. Uh, some of y'all will know McCoyle played with head coach G.J. Kenny at Tulsa, and G.J. is one of my favorite coaches. Um, and quite honestly, the first quarterback that I felt like I had something in common with, because he showed up at, at Tulsa and all he wanted to do was throw the ball around, and I really enjoy that. Uh, but I wanted to step up, talk a little bit about Jackson Dart, talk a little bit about, about Caleb Williams, and do a little bit more of a VOD, uh, VOD impromptu because I miss it and I enjoy it. And if you like it, let me know that you want more of these sorts of conversations in the comments. Maybe we'll have these in spaces on Twitter where you can reinteract with them. Let me know if you think that that's cool. Something like the radio show that I used to do from, you know, 9 to 11 on weekdays right here in Tulsa. All right, that is it for me. I'll see you tomorrow on the number one ranked show. Doses.